I know you guys are probably like super annoyed because this is the second time I am saying a word before I start the reading, but y'all are gonna have to fucking deal with it. Anyway, uh, again, this is the series Icarus, or the fan fiction series that I'm going to be putting in between each episode of Mirai, or chapter, I guess. That would make more sense, right? Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoy Icarus, because I know I did. Anyway, on to the reading. I absolutely, without a doubt, 100% hate my fucking life. I sat in front of my mirror, my eyes blazing with such hatred towards my own reflection. My hair was curled and set in a prissy hairdo that it wasn't even funny. And the tight fitting corset of white I wore made me seriously believe my organs would soon begin to squish out of my mouth as though I were a tube of toothpaste. Something about my appearance made me queasy as it did every week. I hate this fucking job. I hissed under my breath as I stood up, grimacing once again. But it's all I'm good for. The click of my heels against concrete was like the ticking of a clock, counting down to yet another evening of utter embarrassment. I despised this job, but I had already dropped into the pits of the gutter. So it was at least a way I could afford to eat. A woman much older than myself, dressed in identical attire, strode towards me from the stage left exit. Bleach blonde hair bobbing against her bare shoulders. You've got quite a crowd waiting out there for you again, kiddo. I'm a bit jealous. She chuckled in her nicotine ravaged voice patting my back as she stopped beside me. Come on, I'll never be able to beat your performance, you know. A plastic smile forced across my face, but she didn't seem to notice. I still don't know why you insist to have all the club lights on. Most of us prefer working in the dark. She wondered out loud and I gritted my teeth. Oh, yeah, well, I guess it just makes the sparkles stand out more. I motioned to the ridiculous layers of body glitter coating my skin, and she thankfully fell for my lie. I see, smart thinking. Well, better hurry up, Miss Tenshi. Your public awaits. She ushered me towards the stage, and I heaved alongside. Plus... There's a lot of pro heroes out there, and you could score some great tips. Just a side note, that's in the story. I'm going to mention it because it seems important. Tenshi means angel. You're welcome. I don't want to do this again. I shook out my stiff limbs and tried to clear my mind. It's just five minutes of singing and strutting around half-naked in front of a bar full men and pro heroes. Puffing out my chest, I stepped out into the plethora of testosterone. Hey baby. Tenchi, my sweet little girl. Look at those tits. The men immediately began to whistle and holler. It took almost everything. I had to bite my tongue and not spit every drop of venom I have. Ladies and gentlemen, well, gentlemen, may I present the alluring angel of all our dreams, the sweet, the sensual Tenshi. Wow, Mike, I wonder what you would think of your night shifts. The music began, my cue to begin swaying my hips and pleasing the eyes and hard-ons of my crowd. Now, usually I would have just been another average girl working in a strip club, but my quirk was what drew in the customers. My voice was often referred to as hypnotic, 
No matter what I sang, I had people hooked, line and sinker. I was often told that I should be some kind of idol, but that's not what I wanted. Fame was overrated in my eyes. I had never been given a chance at my regular clubs or venues, but I needed to make ends meet some. The real thing that earned me so much attention though was what was slowly forming from my shoulder blades. Really an angel. Those wings are so bright I'm gonna go blind. Flap those beauties for me, love. My large glowing wings, the angel of Club Mashiatsui, the gentleman's paradise with wings made of pure light. The words spilled from my lips as easily as my breath whilst I paraded around in my what may as well have been my birthday suit, suffering under the gawking eyes of too many men to count. I scanned every single face, just as I did every night I performed. They were hard to make out through the glaring lights. I always insisted on having during my act. But as usual, I saw many familiar faces. I immediately recognized Kamui Woods near the back, leaning against the bar next to Pro Hero Wash. He never failed to attend my shows, and he'd often make the cheesiest of wood puns at his own expense. Wash, on the other hand, would just tend to vibrate awkwardly. Native in Godzilla lingered on the sidelines, to which made me groan internally. The only good thing about the pros were that they were generous with their tips. Maybe I can forward a coffee after tonight. As my eyes swept across the room, they landed upon a figure leaning against the table on that far left side. His blonde hair appeared windswept and unkept, and the skin of his bare arms seemed to glow as they poked out from his black and silver top. His eyes were literally glued to me, just like everyone else's. But for the first time, mine stuck right back he has i couldn't miss the rich shade of vermilion that protruded from his back folded comfortably against his body wings just like me i found myself gravitating towards him still singing but wanting to take a closer more intimate look see his dark eyes widened as I stepped closer in my ivory heels, my own spectral wings reaching out to clear my path. I wasn't sure why I wanted to be near the man. I knew it wasn't just because of his identical quirk, but I couldn't pinpoint a reason. He wasn't very tall, only standing a few inches taller than me and he had a light cover of facial hair along his chin and jawline. Once I reached him, still mindlessly singing along to the music, I reached out and ran a pointed finger up his throat to his mandible, making him lift his head higher. I had no real reason for such sultry move, I never touched patrons if I could avoid it, but I just wanted to feel the heat of his skin against mine. For a fleeting moment, I thought that he could be the same as me. Only a single moment before. Oi, Hawks. You lucky fuck getting all the attention, eh? Someone called out and a drunken slur in my eye twitched. Hawks, the up-and-coming pro hero. As though he'd vanished into thin air, I turned around and made my way back to the stage, leaving him dazed and confused. 
I was certainly not a fan of heroes, pro or not. During my 19 years on Earth, I had lost every ounce in faith in them. Growing up, I had had too many run-ins with the so-called peacekeepers, being taken for stealing food to asking for their help. They never did. The mere word hero left a rancid taste in my mouth. Thanks for pointing that out, random drunk pervert. As I sang the last lyric of my song, I spread my wings so their full span striking a pose that made me feel cheaper than chips. Wolf whistles and applause made my ears sting and I finally made my way off the stage, stepping aside gracefully as possible, down into the sea of yellowing grins and waving bills. Time to turn on my charm. I smiled sweetly as I collected my money, avoiding physical contact as much as possible. It was difficult when patrons were reaching out to try to stroke my untouchable wings or grope my ass. You really are hypnotic, Miss Tenchi. Kamui Woods handed me a few notes, making sure to brush my hand. Wow, thanks, Mui. I replied in my fake singing song voice. I had to keep up appearances if I wanted to continue earning money. How about I fix up a nightcap but back at my place? I can show you something that puts mahogany to shame. I'd rather choke on a used condom than risk getting splinters all up between my legs. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, hun, but I've got plans tonight. Maybe next time. I gave him a sly wink as I moved over to wash, who nervously nudged another few bucks my way. Enjoy the show, sweetie. The number eight pro hero vibrated for a few moments before a thick rush of soap spurted from his top, making me take a step back. Did he just cut? Wait, no, I'd rather not know the answer to that. I got away from them as quickly as possible, internally screeching as I flicked off some stray suds that had landed on my thigh. Half of my tips had phone numbers and addresses scribbled on them, which made it difficult to not roll my made-up eyes, but that's how my look. A great big kick in the metaphorical nuts. I couldn't understand why my breath got all caught up in my throat when I approached the wing hero named Hawks. His eyes were no longer wide, but hooded as he watched me saunter up to where he stood, his chin resting on his gloved hand. How's it going? He asked casually as I came to a halt. His offhand demeanor took me off guard, as I didn't seem to get any sleazy vibes from him at all. Better now that I'm talking to you, honey. I purred, feeling so disgusted with my compulsory act. He gave me a few lazy blinks before he let out a strange spluttering laugh, reminding me of a soggy deflating balloon. You're really something else, aren't you? What's your name? He held out his hand and I just stared at it, confused and a little unnerved by his reaction. Ah, come on, I don't bite. Sorry, sweetie, club rules. We can't get touchy with the patrons. I lied through my teeth as I clasped my hands behind my back, below my perked wings. Does that mean the last four girls are gonna get fired? Cause I'm pretty sure they were all over. Everyone. He hummed knowingly, seeing straight through my lies. This little shit. Sorry, I mean I can't get touchy. My tone faltered a bit, but I maintained my pristine smile. 
I hear you loud and clear, sweetheart. He chuckled, tilting his head to the side. It's great to see a fellow avian quirk holder, though. Maybe we can catch up sometime. Again, I didn't seem to pick up any malintent, but my nerves began to kick into overdrive. Perhaps you know where to find me? I nodded my head and turned to retreat backstage when I was stopped by something small and incredibly strong pushing against my stomach. It was a single vermilion feather. Technically, I'm not touching you, right? I snapped my head around and lifted a brow at the cheeky pro, who was waving around a wad of bills. You forgot your tip. Holy fuck on a truck, that's gotta be like 22,000 yen. Biting my lip, I fully turned and held out my hand, but he lifted the money higher into the air. I could have reached it if I really tried. He wasn't that much taller than me, but I was curious. I want to know your name first, he announced. Payment for my name. I hesitated, but the dangling cash in front of me was just too tempting to refuse. Listener, I mumbled, giving him an exasperated exasperated glare before reaching out again to take my earnings. He lifted it even higher, tutting and wagging his gloved finger in my face. And I don't like to touch your wings. Just for a second. Just what kind of a kink do you have, you overgrown chicken? Gritting my teeth, I again looked between him and my chance of actually having a hot meal and a new change of clothes for once. Fine. One second. I muttered sourly, stretching out my glowing appendage and averting my eyes. He handed me the money and stretched out his hand, and I could feel the tingling sensation of his fingers brushing through the light of my wings. He was silent after that, and I immediately began to shred away, shoving the money down my exposed cleavage and trying to shake the tingles away. See ya, sweetie. Fox's point of view. They felt... I stared at my bare hand. I had taken the glove off so I could feel listeners glowing quirk. And swallowed some strange feeling that had begun to creep up in my throat. Hot. Really fucking hot. My fingertips were red from the heat. I flexed them a few times, savoring the warmth. I had never seen a quirk quite like hers. I wondered if they were functional. I wondered about what downfalls it may have. I wondered about how that angelic voice would sound in a breathy whisper close to my ear. Calm down, Hawks. One step at a time. Once I looked up, I only managed to catch one glimpse of her face as she slipped past the curtains. Her wings already began to dissipate into nothingness. I had only intended on killing a few hours at the highly recommended club so I wouldn't wither away from boredom on my night off. But I had stumbled across something incredible. Someone. She's like the sun. Hot. Fiery. Untouchable. Something I needed to get close to. I needed to know more about the elusive woman who had instantly piqued my interest. Well then... Listener, I'll be seeing ya. That was chapter one of Icarus. 
uh, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, I definitely had some fun reading it. Although, uh, I surprisingly didn't stumble that much. I tried breaking up as much as I can so that it wouldn't be so hard for me to read. Especially because I'm such a procrastinator that it's literally 12 a.m. on a Friday. Which today I'm going to be posting it and I'm recording it right now at 12 a.m. Because I procrastinate way too much. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next uh, upload will be, I don't know, maybe something I put in between chapters. But it should be me right. So, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, bye bye.